for those of you who don't know me, I'm the Managing Director of Sprout S. So thank you all for giving up your, your evening to come and speak with us. Like I said, um, it'll only be about 30 or 40 minutes. It's very short and sharp, startup style. So look, to begin with, um, as a bit of an introduction, I, I realise that some of the people that have uh, come along today, it's your first time, first association with SproutX. So SproutX is an accelerator and dedicated venture capital fund within agricultural technology. Uh, I'm pleased to say that we are the most active ag tech investor in the world now. We've made 19 investments in the space of 12 months. No other venture capital company has done that in the world. So we're all surprised by that. But um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a really exciting space to be in and we're really keen to back uh, early, early stage entrepreneurs. So look, first of all, big thank you to our sponsors. So Findex and the National Farmers Federation, who are the joint venture owners of SproutX. Ruleco, who is the premier partner of SproutX. Uh, Artesian Ventures, who, were, who are our investment manager. And also a huge thank you to the Victorian government who provided the grant that initiated SproutX. Uh, AWS, who have joined us today with Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. And finally, of course, our big sponsor from the agricultural industry, Meat Livestock Australia. Thank you so much. But there's also one particular individual that I want to thank here today. Um, he's a little bit busy eating at the moment, but that's all right. <laughs> it's Sam Chatui. <laughs> so for those of you who have followed SproutX for a while, you'll know uh, he's not up on stage. Uh, but look, Sam moved on to work on a new farm venture, and unfortunately for us, um, yeah, he's moved on and he's working on that, but we really acknowledge and thank him for his significant contribution in helping to co-found SproutX and the uh, incredible amount of value that he's added. So thank you so much, Sam. Mm -hmm. Just really want to thank you. So look, on to the startups, and they're the feature for tonight. Um, a bit over two years ago, we, we had started SproutX and we had no idea as to how it would go, um, and let alone achieve any investment outcomes. And if I can relate a bit of a story, uh, one of our chief sponsors pulled me aside early on and he sort of said to me, hey look, I want to take a bit of pressure off your shoulders. Uh, in our experience, in the first couple of years in running a you know, venture capital accelerator, you're not going to get many successes. So just manage your expectations, that, you know, don't, don't feel too pressured. Well look, it's been a couple of years since then and I'm pleased to say that uh, that's proved incorrect. And we've had some very pleasing results so far. So from the first batch who went through the 2017 accelerator, we have two teams on a 10 times valuation, one team on a nine times, and one team on a seven times. They're not exits yet, but it's a very positive indicator, and we do have other teams continuing to raise, and the majority are revenue positive. So the results are coming in, and they're very strong. Um, but the focus for tonight is actually this year. And we have eight startups, and of the eight startups, three of them already have lead investors. So, personally speaking, I'm actually extremely confident of the investment outcomes from uh, this cohort, and they may be as good, if not better, than the previous cohort. So, it's really pleasing to see. Of course, at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. It'll be up to you. So, I hope you guys are impressed uh, with them, as I am. Before I finish off, I did want to just talk about the wider ecosystem. It's actually really strange. In the past month or two weeks or so, I've just been having this steady stream of government visitors, uh, local, international, as well as venture capital companies from Australia and Southeast Asia and the rest of the world, and they've all been uh, calling through and emailing. And we've really come to a pivot point. Everyone is very much consistently saying that they want ag tech as part of their portfolio. This has become a really big thing. There's a lot of momentum in this space, and I think we've finally hit that pivot point. And I, uh, I hope you guys will come to agree that the startups that we're showcasing today are at a new level of maturity. So look, without any further ado, I'll pass it on to our mistress of ceremonies. I, I called her master of ceremonies yesterday and she wasn't happy with that. So our mistress of ceremonies, Julie Waite, and she'll take you through the startups and run you through the format. Mistress of ceremonies, I'm gonna let the gender neutral pronoun, Andrew. Hashtag me too. 
Uh, as Andrew mentioned, we're very proud of the investment pledges our startups have achieved. But perhaps the most valuable part of the accelerator is the access to world-class mentoring. And none have been more valuable, as far as I see, on a day-to-day -day basis to the cohort than each other. And it's been really nice over the last six months to see them keep each other accountable to their goals, uh, be available for a little brainstorm session during our workshop weeks, and um, it just forming these really great friendships through a common startup struggle. It's been wonderful to see. However, to keep evolving year after year, we need to keep expanding our mentor network, our network of wisdom and advisors. So that's why this evening we've got, uh, I've got three asks for you. The first is that you be active listeners tonight. So while you're listening to the, the pitches, um, if something strikes a chord, some, uh, something occurs to you that you know a path or you know someone that could be a connector, an advisor or a strategic investor for these companies, you know, speak up. They'll be here in their little expo area afterwards um, we've got nibbles and drinks, and that's your time to go and make that introduction. The second thing, um, use your phones. Be social. We've got a couple of little uh, Twitter handles there for you to use and uh, get this uh, word around. And then the third part is make the startups feel welcome. Everyone you're about to see um, is sharing their passion project with you that they've been just busting on for the last six months, and for most of them, much longer than that. Um, so they may be feeling a bit nervous, a little vulnerable. This is our home crowd here in Melbourne. So uh, please make them feel welcome. If it's appropriate to laugh, you know, give them a laugh. Clap where, where you feel, you know, the clap is well deserved. Uh, and without, without further ado, I'll throw over to our first startup. What you're going to hear tonight, three minute pitches uh, from eight of our teams uh, with questions afterwards in the foyer. So, to kick it off, we've got our resident snack provider, yes. Guy Blackburn from the Edible Bug Shop. I didn't think everybody realised that they've already eaten bugs on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> New splash. My name is Sky, and I'm the founder of the Edible Bug Shop, a global leader in producing and supplying edible insect products. The way that we consume food is unsustainable and ripe for change. We turn food waste, which would normally go to landfill, into a tiny, nutritious superfood, all while using a fraction of the amount of space and natural resources when compared to traditional sources of protein. All of our products look and taste like familiar food items that just happen to have edible insects as the key nutritional ingredient. Sorry. Think about having your normal yogurt, but instead of using cow's milk, you actually use cricket milk, which has four times as much calcium. Over the past six months, we've signed deals with Australia's largest supermarkets, increased our average monthly sales by 325%, and developed game-changing automation for the edible insect market. Ten years ago, when I started this company, producing a kilo of cricket protein was comparative to a wagon steak. Today at scale, we can produce the, for the same price as a uh, supermarket steak. Using our technologies, we can produce for less than the cost of chicken. We've been capitalising on our media exposure, bringing um, edible insects to the forefront of consumer minds. Consumers are now aware that edible insects are more sustainable and have more nutrition with every mouthful. Consumer acceptance is at an all-time high. Edible insects are part of the growing alternative proteins market, which is forecast to hit over $11 million within the next five years. We currently supply over 95% of all commercially available edible insects products within Australia. We control everything from farm to table. I'm a food scientist and entomologist and have devoted the last 10 years of my life researching edible insects. With me from the very beginning are Todd and Solari, who are responsible for developing innovations to start a global expansion. In recent years, there's been a number of well-funded entrants into the edible insect space globally. These competitors currently don't have the experience and know-how to develop these new products like we can. That won't be the case forever though, which is why we need to act now to aggressively expand. We're currently raising a round of $1.5 million to help us 
um, increase our production capacity by over 10 times and reduce our cost per kilo by 15 times. This will help us increase our monthly revenue to over $200,000 per month within the next 18 months. The next big thing in food is little. My name is Skye and you can bug me about bugs. Um, what she mentioned about uh, many of you have actually already tried the crickets. Uh, did you enjoy the corn chips on the buffet table? If so, you've eaten crickets. You're welcome. Okay, on to our second picture, we've got Mark Morris from Environment. Good evening. I'm Mark, one of the co-founders of Viroi, and we're recently bringing business intelligence to the vineyard. Our industry leading application, Vinehub, active on nearly a dozen commercial vineyards, is bringing game-changing insights to our growers. This year, Australia import increased its wine exports by an impressive 20%. And yet, based on a 2016 Senate inquiry, Profitability remains a challenge for many wine grape producers in this country. And yet there's hope. The federal government recently recognised a $706 million automation and digitisation opportunity for the wine industry. What does that mean on the ground? We'll meet our customer Andy. And when we met Andy, he would, in his daily decision making, consult no less than 17 applications and sources of information. It was an impediment to productivity. It robbed him of operational agility. It fostered poor decision making and it risked his business continuity. So to help Andy combine all these various silos of data, we developed Vinehub. And we set ourselves out from the pack by building the industry's most tightly integrated data ecosystem. Our tech focuses on Sensor data built on our own homegrown hardware. Algorithms we developed across third party data. As well as ingesting all the growers own sources of information. So finally, growers are empowered to organise, analyse and gain impact and insights from their data. We have an excellent product market fit and the traction to prove it. Big producers, small producers, bulk, premium, all around the country. We're also actively scoping trials with some of the biggest producers in Australia as well. In terms of competition, we believe we've set a new benchmark for an industry-focused, integrated data application. And it's an exciting opportunity. Globally, the wine market is worth 23 billion. And if you put table breaks in there, it's another couple of billion. And the platform has been designed specifically to adapt to other verticals as well. A business business model is margin on hardware plus a SaaS subscription, and we're currently seeking an investment of six hundred thousand dollars to aggressively ramp up our Australian distribution and also help us make headroads into the table break industry. I'm Mark, my other co-founder is Michael, and between us we have a combined. What is experience in drinking good wine, but also the most the professional, personal, and technical skills to make this bench an absolute winner. I'm going to close with Matthew from Rutherglen State, who I met at a recent conference. And he later sent me his vision or his notes on the ultimate vineyard application. And when I read his notes, my heart literally skipped a beat because when I read it, I knew we'd nailed our product market fit. So I'm Mark, we're in Barawai, and the application is Vinehub. Thank you. And now we have Hamish Crittenden uh, to pitch Checkpoint Tools to you. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Hi, everybody. I'm Hamish from Checkpoint Tools, the world's largest interactive biosecurity database. Our team have pioneered the technology we call Biosecurity as a Service. We developed this technology during 10 years of research activity with the plant biosecurity CRC. And here are three reasons why. Fruit fly causes billions of dollars of damage every year and it costs hundreds of millions of dollars to manage in Australia alone. 
Capra beetle is an existential threat to the stored grains industry, and that is worth $3 billion in this country every year. The varroa mite attacks honeybees. It was found in Townsville in 2016, and if it's not managed properly, it's going to decimate our ability to pollinate. That means that we're going to have a huge problem with the broadacre cropping industry and, uh, and horticulture. So we might be in a position where we can't feed ourselves. This is the checkpoint image library record for the red fire ant. This guy was found in Queensland backyard, incidentally, in 2001. The government spent $180 million on eradication programs. In 2005, it turned up in New South Wales. Now it's an invasive endemic. Using checkpoint tools, this guy could have been intercepted at his point of entry into Australia. This is a checkpoint tools inquiry tool. Uh, farmers, agronomists, entomologists, plant pathologists, biosecurity officers, inspectors can all rapidly form groups and securely communicate to manage biosecurity issues before they become catastrophes. So using the data from all these tools, we aggregate and provide real-time insights and intelligence <laughs> and decision support to help maintain market access. Because market access and trade is protected by good biosecurity. The problem is that all this data is not stored in one spot. Some of it's digital, in disparate disconnected data sets. Some of it's in WhatsApp groups, in WeChat messages, in emails. Some of it's written on paper and some of it's just not collected at all. But it doesn't have to be this way. Because Checkpoint Tools flattens the biosecurity landscape into this by providing cloud-hosted, always available, unified platform that works straight out of the box and even integrates with existing organisational software and hardware infrastructure. So we're active in 15 countries in Southeast Asia, in the South Pacific, including Australia. It's a software as a service model and we sell it to business and governments. And since starting SproutX, we've hosted Thailand's Director General of Agriculture here in Australia. So we've got a bunch of deals in the pipeline and we're going on an enterprise roadshow in November to uh, bring our customers on board. So if you have a biosecurity mandate or responsibility in your organisation and you're not talking to us, you should be. So come find me, my name's Hamish, and let's have a talk about how checkpoint tools can work for biosecurity in your organisation. Thanks. Congratulations to Hamish, he also lost his glasses moments before he went on stage, so well done. An extra clap from me for uh, still being able to read your slides. Uh, on to our, our fourth picture, we've got our resident Englishman, Ollie Magic, uh, pitching Plat Farm. Good evening, everybody. We're Plat Farm, and we're on a mission to make any of the 30 million simple tractors out there in the world smarter just using mobile phones and tablets. So three years ago, I became a grape grower in McLaren Vale, supplying to Penfolds. But in my previous life, I was one of the co-founders of a social games company that we grew to having over 10 million players of our games before we were acquired. Um, and as a farmer, I quickly realised that we have access to a plethora of data that shows us the variability of our land. But the problem is that when we try and turn these insights into actual practical action out there on the vineyard, what you have to do is you have to physically go round and tie up tape to tell either your team or your contractors where to start the stop work. And it was the frustration with this that led Andrew, who's my technical co-founder, and myself to develop Platform. And our tools allow these layers of third-party data to be imported in. Uh, we have very simple tools that allow prescription maps to be drawn of where work needs to be carried out. And then Platform acts just like a sat-nav out in the tractor telling the operator when to start work, when to stop work, or when to change rate. And Platform also uh, tracks the work that you're doing. So for example, just at the moment, when we're in spray season, um, Platform's tracking your spraying to ensure that you don't miss any rows that go on to become your disease hotspots. So we've used Platform, and we developed it for our own vineyard uh, nearly three seasons ago. 
It's helped us to take our blocks, which were typically kind of grade B, C level, up to all B and grade A this year. So that's made a really significant increase in our underlying profitability. And we now want to go and start sharing those benefits with other growers. So uh, why are we already not all farming with greater precision? Well, the main reason is cost. So to adopt the kind of traditional technology out there in the market, it's an investment of over $10,000. Whereas we're using just everyday consumer devices. But just as importantly, they're interfaces that, that growers already know how to intuitively use. So how does platform make money? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, how does platform go and make money? So we have multiple revenue streams. It's, it's costed on a cost per hectare basis, but we have a secondary revenue stream in that we allow uh, transactions to occur through the app. So initially that's being able to purchase bigger imagery. Um, our initial niche market is the 7 million hectares of, of uh, global uh, uh, vineyards. And we believe that that presents a revenue opportunity for platform of between 20 to 30 million dollars per season. Uh, just this winter, we've been trialling platform with some of the biggest growers out there in the country and some of the top brands. And these guys are now all coming on boards to be paying users and advisors to us this season. But platform, you know, like it's, a, it's, a, it's applicable to many other forms of, of farming, you know, across horticulture, across dairy, across livestock. And our real massive opportunity is about making, you know, any one of those 30 million tractors out there in the world smarter. And to that end, we'll be raising a seed round at the start of next year um, of just north of a million dollars. And if you're interested in following our progress, please do send me an email or come and see me afterwards. Thank you so much for your time. Our two teams that focus on provenance and have David and Darius speaking to Fresh Supply Co. Hi there. <clears throat> Hi there, I'm David. I'm one of the co founders of Fresh Supply Co. We focus on uh, provenance, marketing, and, pay and payments for the food and ag sector. Now, brand recognition, a clear brand identity, and authenticity are all hugely important for large producers exporting into Asia where the market is huge, it's very competitive. It's what the market demands and it's what consumers want. In fact, if you look at the companies with the largest market share or the highest growth, they've taken that very seriously. And that's what we do. We make it easy for producers to implement that. By, track, by linking physical product with information about what makes the rate on the blockchain, and we make sure that when consumers pull that information back down, what they see is relevant, meaningful, and that there's a targeted market-specific or user-specific um, promotion that, in line with the way consumers really like to shop. In the past six months, we've gone from zero to over 100,000 annual recurring revenue. We've got more than 20 customers, and we're growing, and we work across a range of different segments. Um, some of our customers include the largest exporter of mangoes, largest exporter of avocados, and largest processor of nuts in the country. And we've expanded internationally, going to the USA and Mexico. It's a huge opportunity. In Australia alone, it's worth over $43 billion, and look, two thirds of that is going to Asian markets. So how do we make money? Well, at the core of how we make money is producer success. We're, we're capturing that information about you know, why is that product so premium, pushing to the blockchain, and now when that product reaches the point of sale, making sure there's a promotion to further drive sales, and then lastly, on that same blockchain-based core, we're replacing letters of credit with digital payments um, because it's more efficient, and it, yeah, it costs a lot less. Uh, we are currently working with Alipay Arms. And quarter one next year, we'll be debuting at Whole Foods um, in, in the States. Competition, so how are we different from the other blockchain companies? Well, first off, we weren't built around blockchain, uh, around the cryptocurrency-based core. So we got to avoid the cost, lack of speed, and volatility that typically plagues the companies in the sector. Number two would be the holistic approach to the whole transaction, making sure that uh, producers, retailers, and consumers have all been incentivized. And then lastly, the IP around the whole thing. We've got a team that can first off build it, 
Secondly, make sure we're delivering value. And lastly, that we have customers to make money. And we're growing rapidly. In fact, demand for our services is a lot, outstrips our ability to supply, and that's why we're raising capital. Um, we're you going to use that to grow, capture large segments of the market, and utilize our first mover advantage. So if that sounds interesting to you, and you think it would be a good fit, please come and have a chat with us later. serves consumers who want to know about their food to consumers who want to visit their food. Anna Yip will present Off the Table. Hi, I'm Anna, the founder of Off the Table. We're an agritourism experiences platform that takes people directly to the source of where their favourite foods come from. I'm the former curator of the Taste of Tasmania, Tasmania's premier food and wine event. And what I know is that connection to where food comes from drives sales. Culinary tourism is a global industry worth $160 billion a year. And in Australia, agritourism, which is just the business of going to farms and salivores, is worth $10.25 billion. Why? Because more than ever, people want to know where their food comes from. But for primary producers, accessing this market is really difficult. Foodies are highly digitally engaged, but most of agritourism operates outside digital spaces. So Off the Table solves this problem. We're a two-way marketplace for food experiences on farms that take people to experience where it comes from. And we wrap around things like a digital farm gate shop, wayfinding, um, and um, uh, language translation and even cross-border e-commerce to make it really easy to explore regional areas, especially targeted for the growing Chinese tourism market, which is set to double in the next two years. We design for foodies, and that's what makes us really different. We take your favorite brands, and we take their suppliers and turn their suppliers into incredible food journeys all around regional areas. Dine at a restaurant tonight, and walk through the paddocks and the orchards of where that food comes from tomorrow. But applications on the table are not just limited to restaurants, but to any brand that which provenance is a key value proposition in consumer sales. Markets and supermarkets, food and wine festivals, regional development tourism bodies, and FMCG brands. We make money by clipping the ticket on experience transactions as well as farm gate sales. And we also charge an onboarding fee for brands. In the last couple of months, we've not only generated over $60,000 in services, but also onboarded the top food, agriculture, and tourism agents, uh, tourism bodies in Tasmania and rolling out an exciting food program this summer. And what's really key is our distribution. We will launch with over 400,000, uh, sorry, a digital reach of over 400,000 of the stickiest foodies with our summer program. I'm the founder and a service designer with 13 years experience designing consumer journeys that take people between online and offline spaces. And in the world of food and experience marketplaces, there's a thousand different options to search for your favourite restaurant, but very few to see where their food comes from. Culinary tourism is one of the fastest growing consumer industries in the world. We've already been approached by three regional areas outside of Tasmania to onboard their uh, uh, tourism program, um, and we've only just launched. We're raising a small seed round. If this is of interest to you, please come and speak to me tonight. Thanks. Seamless technical transitions at the Victoria's Technical Innovation Hub. <laughs> there we go. Cool. All right. Uh, good luck to our next picture. It's Cormac Dolan with Agnesh. Hi, I'm Cormac, and at Agnesh, we, we're here to digitise the paddock. 
And this year, our focus is helping red meat livestock producers reshape farming in the paddock with our IoT-based solution. We're a core team. We're a core team with over 20 years' experience across agriculture, sensing and control systems, enterprise software, and SaaS startup success. But what's the problem? In Australia and around the world, there's literally billions of dollars worth of livestock grazing grass and no way to track how these animals are performing. Time poor livestock producers must rely on visual observation. To put that reliance into perspective, a sheep farmer we know lost an entire mop at a cost of over $35,000 for a single preventable crisis event. This isolated example highlights the significant challenges faced by producers not having access to remote monitoring tools. So what's our solution? Through our farming, through understanding of farming practicalities and the fact that just like me and you, animals drink water, we developed a smart trough. Our revolutionary technology seamlessly vents to any water trough, automatically capturing productivity data as an animal drinks water from the trough. The value to producers is that actionable insights are placed right under their fingertips. But it's more than that. We deliver a service to farmers that simplifies automatic data capture, transmitting it to the cloud, running algorithms to answer key questions and presenting it in a useful way, all of which unlocks remote access to information that enables better decisions by farmers. Through our trials, we're discovering multiple use cases from the, the productivity data smart top helps capture, and what makes us different from other emerging technologies such as smart ear tags where the economics are still being flushed out is that we've developed a solution at a price point that fills the business case today. There's plenty of benefits to this. Improved animal welfare, benchmark performance, provenance, and reduced labour costs. This is a billion dollar opportunity in Australia alone. There's over 62,000 businesses grazing livestock with over 670,000 paddocks ready for smart crop. We make money by selling hardware through a supply, through rural supply partnerships which are currently developing and charging a tiered subscription package to producers. In only five months, we've gone from zero product to executing five trials, generating an estimated 40k in pipeline, and being backed by industry body in Livestock Australia. Our ask is for $550,000 investment. Anyone keen on exploring partnerships, please do come talk to us. And anyone who can provide introductions to key people in the ecosystem, we'd love to hear from you. We work with farmers to create value, and we want you involved as we help revolutionise the farm paddock. Thanks for listening. I'm Cormac and Agnes. We'd love to talk. Challenge at the Royal Melbourne Show, and he's here to present Zero Harm Farm. Thanks, Julia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark, and I'm a co founder of a company called Zero Harm Farm, and we're the world's fastest growing agricultural health and safety solution. We have gone from what was just a great idea 18 months ago to now having over 4,500 users here in Australia and in New Zealand. And while we're really proud of our growth, there's actually a bit of a scary reason behind why we're growing so fast. Right here in Australia, on average, 50 people are killed every year on farms, so that's 50. So by the end of this week, by Sunday, on average, someone's father, or mother, or even a child is going to be killed on an Australian farm. And the thing is, it's not just a problem here in Australia. It's the same in Ireland, it's the same in New Zealand, and it's the same in the USA. All around the world, the regulators are all interacting with the same problem. And we felt there were three root causes for this. Firstly, that paper-based compliance is really ineffective on farm. It just doesn't work. Secondly, there's an inherently poor safety culture in agriculture, and this leads to low levels of safety engagement. And lastly, there's a, a massive knowledge gap around about how to deliver a really comprehensive health and safety solution on farm. The gap's just too wide, it's all too hard. So, if you had a solution, what might it look like? We felt that at the core of any effective health and safety system, there should be a simple, mobile, and paperless tool. And for agriculture, that tool is Zero Harm Farm. What it does is it seamlessly engages with the farm and all the agribusiness stakeholders to deliver paperless compliance, really lifts the levels of engagement for people like visitors and contractors through our digital application, and completely removes any kind of comprehensive knowledge required by a farm manager or owner to deliver a really good system on farm. Since joining Stratix, we've grown by a further 1,500 users and added to 250 sites. We've been post-revenue since we turned it on 18 months ago, 
But what we're really excited about is um, our conversations with three leading agricultural insurers here in Australia. Um, because what they see is a potential for us to deliver uh, a pre-qualified lower risk customer. And what excites us is about the ability for us to lower insurance premiums for farmers on the land. And that's important because our estimates are around $30 billion are spent in Commonwealth countries and the US alone around risk management and insurance. And $4 billion of that is spent here in Australia and New Zealand alone. We've got a little bit of competition, so it's just a great field to be in. But the cool thing about Zero Arm Farm is we've been built from the ground up as an ag-focused tool. We're the most comprehensive and easy to use, and we're world first. There is no one else doing our risk uh, insurance cover premium lowering uh, system anywhere else in the world. Who are we? We're a group of founders with over 40 years of corporate and startup experience. And the important thing is we're backed up by an in-house team of software developers. We currently have a lead investor that we're negotiating our final valuation on, but we're also searching for further distribution partners and equity partners. So if anyone out there believes that the future of ag risk management is simple, mobile and paperless and offers uh, farmers lower insurance premiums, I'd love to talk to you. My name is Mark and we're Zero Arm Farm. Thanks very much. Teams, this is their last pitch as part of the Accelerator program. They're gone. We're kicking them out. They've graduated. So, yeah, one more round of applause for everyone. Here. <laughs> um, well, so that, I want to say a big thank you to our staff team. So, Andrew and April have worked so hard this year um, working with these guys and to bring this event off tonight. Um, thanks to our joint venture partners, National Farms Federation, Findex, uh, and our sponsors, Rule Code. MLA and Wrigley, thanks all for coming. Um, it's not the end of the night yet. Uh, please do sit around and ask your questions, chat, um, make those connections, and we hope you enjoyed the evening. Please come back next year. Thank you. We're so thrilled to have the teams doing their pitches. Everything's gone off really well today. Investment outcomes have been fantastic, not only for the previous year, but for the current year. Uh, AgTech just really has a lot of momentum, so we're just thrilled to have this level of talent and quality uh, just within Australia. So, yeah, the future's looking really good. So we don't know where in the world you're watching this video, but if you hear something that you recognise and you know someone, an advisor, a mentor or an investor that could help one of these teams, get in touch with SproutX at info at sproutx.com.au or with the startups directly.